Time to try melting copper again, this time with blue fire. People ask me why I light it like this. Well, so I can get a decent flame without a big woof of fire in my face. And I turn it on, add air, and easy peasy. Okay, that's gonna take a little while, so let's have a chat while that heats up. Uh, first question I know I'm gonna get, why are you melting copper? Uh, copper is actually kind of a terrible casting metal, like it's real bad, uh, but it's great for alloying. Like there are alloys of copper that are awesome, which is why I'm trying to melt it. So if I can get copper melted, I can make all the alloys because copper is the hardest part of the me melting process. It melts way, way hotter than anything I should melt. Now this burner that I made, no problem. Have no problem melting copper. But the furnace, uh, it doesn't insulate very well. This is my improved MIDI metal foundry. So the liner is uh, castable refractory cement and it's much tougher. It hasn't broke down at all from the heat, but it doesn't insulate as well as the plaster and sand. Uh, on the upside, it hasn't broken down at all, so I haven't had to remake it a bunch of times, which is nice. But I'm trying to overcome heat loss, basically, with more fire, because more fire usually works. And here's one of the alloys that I want to make. I kind of made this a tiny bit of it uh, using charcoal. That's mostly copper with some aluminum in it, and it's aluminum bronze. That's, that's uh, it's golden color, like brass, but it, it work hardens really, really hard, and uh, I want to make a bunch of cool stuff out of it. Also, I have some materials for other alloys, uh, uh, silicon bronze, so I have silicon and I have some manganese chips, uh, but I haven't tried using any of those because I need to melt copper reliably first. So hopefully this will go well. If not, this will all have to wait more until I get off my lazy butt and build the better insulating furnace. But who knows when that'll be? You know, at the rate I usually finish projects, it'll probably be like 2025, 2026 maybe. Harsh bright light makes it hard to record. Sunlight? Shade. We haven't had sunlight like this in so long. It's been raining every weekend. I finally get a weekend without rain, so we gotta do all the melting we can. Check it out. Don't know if you can see, but everything's turning red. I generally don't have it up this hot because, uh, well, aluminum just turns red and melts, but this stuff's gonna go like yellow before the end. Another thing, copper is different from aluminum. In aluminum, hydrogen is the enemy. In copper, oxygen is kind of the bigger jerk. It'll turn everything into copper oxide and you'll, you'll run out of molten copper. So to that end, I'm burning a little bit rich, I think. It's really hard to tell, honestly. Uh, and I put some charcoal, little bits of hard lump charcoal, in the crucible. The idea is any oxygen that does get in there uh, will burn these before it messes with the, the copper. Also, in aluminum, I use that low salt, that or light salt or whatever it is, the low sodium table salt as a, a, a flux to make it runnier. In copper, people use copper phosphorus, which you can buy in bags of shot uh, for casting or brazing rod. So that's why I have this here, copper phosphorus brazing rod. It's probably the most expensive per pound way of buying this stuff, but uh, brazing rod tends to be pretty pure. It doesn't have a lot of other junk in it, so that's always a plus. You can see I've been going for a while now, and it's pretty red in there. Unfortunately, it will not get hotter. Just will not quite break into molten copper territory. It was a little warmer than that, but I turned it down now. Uh, so what that means is plan B. You know what I've noticed? Plan B is a lot louder than plan A. So that's minorly deafening in real life. But you might be wondering about that spoon there on the right. That spoon is vital. It's got a little bit of copper frozen on the end of it, but it's fine. That's holding the lid open ever so slightly, and that's because that hole in the top there, that circular hole, that's not big enough, and it uh, doesn't let enough air out for a propane burner. That actually brings up an interesting point about this furnace design in general, and for that, we're going to have to go to a cutaway. So here's the furnace that's recording after the fact. First I want to mention, look at how nice this liner is holding up. It's not really cracked, it's not crumbling, it's quite tough. There's still this nice defined line where the top of it was. I'm really happy with how this held up. This isn't even foundry refractory cement. This is meant for like a fireplace or something. When one of the bricks breaks, you can stuff it with this. And it works. It hasn't screwed up at all, despite being yellow hot for quite a lot. 
But the reason we're looking at this is because there's a couple things to worry about when it comes to uh, furnace design, specifically the wall here. The lining has two functions. One, to handle the heat. This does uh, that part pretty well, considering it's off the shelf, like cheapo stuff I got at Menards. But the second thing it has to do is insulate, to retain heat. The original liner of this mini metal foundry design was plaster and sand. That does the second thing really well, the insulation. It doesn't let too much heat transfer through it. But the first part, handling the heat, it doesn't do so well. So you've got to remake it all the time, and that's really annoying. But the insulating properties of this are kind of uh, affected by two things also. The first thing is how well this material stops heat from transferring through it. And there's three kinds of heat transfer, radiation, convection, and conduction. But we're gonna ignore radiation and convection because they're completely unimportant right now. I just said them because it makes me feel smart. But conduction, so how well this material stops conduction. And then secondly, how thick this is, how much of this I have to do the insulation. You can think of it like this. If it's winter, you go outside, uh, you can't because it's summer, unless you live in Australia or somewhere south. Hmm. Seasons are fun. Anyway, you go outside, take off your clothes, it's cold. Put on a thin fleece blanket. Fleece is somewhat insulating. The thin fleece blanket helps. Put on seven thin fleece blankets, you end up with a thick fleece layer. It's better insulated. You're warmer, though your feet are probably cold because, you know, you're standing on something. Unless you wear fleece booties or something, I don't know. I don't know what your wardrobe is. But this is both not very well insulating and not very thick. So it's a double, double bad thing for keeping the heat in. And that's important, even though this thing is full of propane fire, uh, heat transfers out at a very high rate. And that rate is affected by the insulating properties of this thickness and the difference between the heat inside and outside. So the higher the difference, or the hotter it is in here, or the colder it is out here, the faster heat will transfer out. That's why cranking up the burner to increase the amount of heat going in does not necessarily translate to that much more temperature inside the furnace. It will translate to a little bit more, but it will also translate to more heat leaving through the walls. So it'll reach like an equilibrium. That is why, even though I could crank the burner up even more, I won't. Well, also because it sounds like a freaking jet engine and any more volume my neighbors are definitely gonna notice because I do this on Sunday and they're like out doing things with their families. I tried to reduce the nerdiness of that as much as possible. I totally left out all the stuff about heat transfer from the flame to the inside thing and the amount of air coming out the top and balancing all that and the airflow through the burner when it isn't in forced air. So just forget all that, it makes my tiny mind hurt. I only mentioned the word conduction once, so I, th I think we're good. And with that taken care of, back to the glowing metal. Well, I give up. It got so hot, but not hot enough. You let me down, hair dryer. Now it looks like I really need to start building that better foundry. Like, now. 